ധർമ്മാൻ ഭാഗവതാൻ ഇഹ ആസ് ലോങ് ആസ് യു ലിവ് ഇൻ ദിസ് വേൾഡ് അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡ് മൈ ഡിയർ ഫാദർ ദർ ഇസ് എ പ്രൊസീജർ ടു ബി അഡോപ്റ്റഡ് ദർ ഇസ് എ ഡിസിപ്ലിൻ ടു ബി അഡ്വേർ ടു ദർ മസ്റ്റ് ബി എ വാച്ച് വേർഡ് ടു ബി കോൺസ്റ്റൻലി സ്ട്രിവൺ ഫോർ വാട്ട് ഈസ് ദാറ്റ് കൗമാർ ആചരേത് പ്രാജ്ഞ എ വൈസ് മാൻ ഷുഡ് സ്റ്റാർട്ട് ഹിസ് ഭാഗവത ധർമ്മ പ്രാക്ടീസ് റൈറ്റ് ഫ്രം ചൈൽഡ്ഹുഡ് കൗമാരേ ഏവ വാട്ട് ഈസ് കൗമാര ദ മോമെൻറ്റ് എ ചൈൽഡ് ഈസ് ഏബിൾ ടു സ്പീക്ക് ഹിയർ ആൻഡ് അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡ് ഹി ബിക്കംസ് എ കുമാര ഇൻ ദറ്റ് കൗമാര സ്റ്റേജ് ഇറ്റ് സെൽഫ് ദ ഡിസ്ക്രീറ്റ് പേഴ്സൺ ഭാഗവതാൻ ധർമ്മാൻ ആചരേത് ഹി ഷുഡ് സ്റ്റാർട്ട് പ്രാക്ടീസിങ് ആൻഡ് പെർസ്യൂയിങ് ദ ഭാഗവത ധർമ്മാസ് ഐ ഓൾറെഡി ടോൾ യു ഭാഗവത ധർമ്മ വാട്ട് ഈസ് ദറ്റ് ഭാഗവത ധർമ്മ ദ ക്യാരക്ടറിസ്റ്റിക്സ് ആൻഡ് ദ ട്രേറ്റ്സ് അസോസിയേറ്റഡ് വിത്ത് എ റൈറ്റ് ഹോൾസം ഡിവോട്ടി ഓഫ് ദ ലോഡ് what will be the thought pattern what will be the behavior what will be the speech style everything what are the values associated with him he upholds what is the goal that he is fostering what are the disciplines purity etc he also practices and pursues this is called the bhagavata dharma these dharmas the children should be exposed my dear listeners are you carefully following what i am saying most of you are parents and many of you will become parents in the years to come understand it very clearly the mere household life is not going to elevate you at all you must have something more precious more deep more lofty more pious more wholesome more purifying this you will not get from the mere household you have to read and understand the bhagavata dharmas Srimad Bhagavatam, consisting of 18,000 Sanskrit verses, will mean an ample lot, a great deal for you. Buy a book, start reading at least one or two chapters every day. Whenever you find something useful, benevolent and beautiful, share it with the family members. Call them. Today I have read this. I would like to share with you whatever the values or lessons I have learned. In this manner, make it make it an inevitable part of your household life kaumara aajareet prajno dharman bhagavata niha you are normally wearing your usual modern dress but every one of us has got a deshi dress now make the point that your children are given the deshi dress at least one time in a week and take them to the temple ask them to stand before the deity closing their hands closing their eyes ask them to do some pradakshina circumambulation along with the children inside the temple never talk anything of the household it is not a friendly meeting that you must have there the moment you go inside the wall of the temple surrounding wall of the temple your mind should be filled with divine thoughts divine memories god's names sankirtan and the like train the children like this at home also make them sit before a lit lamp close their eyes say tell them close your eyes look into your own mind interlock your fingers put them on your lap try to be as erect as possible and watch and look into your own mind even 5 10 or 25 minutes you do this practice you cannot imagine how great a contribution and enrichment will it be it will be so elevating we want something called restfulness in our life we are throughout restless restless agitated agitated tense tense stressed up our mind is a cyclone these conditions can be set right provided you learn the habit of being silent dipped into yourself this is a practice that you must have if one cannot do it then we ask him to do some puja or to chant some prayers something like that but actually what is required is you should be closing up within yourself looking into your own mind kaumara aacharet prajno dharman bhagavatanika now this is not i am only telling you one line this is actually a whole instruction it goes on hiranyakashipu heard what is this what is this my son is not in the way of an improvement he is becoming worse he is becoming stronger 
he has the audacity to tell me that this is what we should do earlier he told me household is a blind well get away from the blind well go to the forest and sit in contemplation and devotion towards lord hari now he says all the children all the children of the world in my empire should be exposed to devotional dharma right from childhood what is this the earlier reaction the same reaction in an intensified form grew in him he was inflamed he was inflamed the father also took a firmer stand then what happened he started thinking he is a son to me but is he behaving like a son not at all not at all if my own son is proving injurious and harmful to my family and my lineage why should i keep him maybe another son is helpful i can treat him as my son this son cannot be treated as my family member i have to dispose him off dispose him off see our scriptures are always very rational rational and they will cite reason for everything to prove something is good they will quote reason and example to prove something to be bad there also there will be reason they are providing it so that your intelligence will develop and you will not merely be just moral by practice you will also moral by reason rational and propriety so the father is arguing within himself to the listening of all concerned he goes on saying paropya patyam hitakritya dhaushadam स्वदेहजोप्यामयवत्सुतो अहितः चिन्द्यात्तदंगं यदुदात्मनो अहितं शेषं सुखं जीवदि यद्विवर्जनाद् परोप्यवत्यं हितकृत्यथौषधं सी वी आर समटाइम्स टेकिंग इवन बिटर मेडिसिन्स व्हाई बिकॉज इट इज अ मेडिसिन एंड इट विल क्योर अस ऑफ आवर डिसीजेस सो इवन इफ इट इज अनदर सन suppose he is doing good and help for us then we should treat him as a medicine we should accept him and foster him on the other hand so they ekha jo pyamayavat sudo ahitah a child born of one's own loins provided he is an ahita he is not benevolent he is on the other hand harmful and dangerous then he should be treated like a disease in the body you don't keep any disease in your body you treat and cure in the same manner this harming child unuseful child hateful child destructional child should be dealt with chindyatta dangam yadudatmano ahidam suppose there is a limb a finger or even a limb of your body it is infected it has been ulcerated and if you continue to keep it there the whole body will be affected when it comes to that stage you amputate and cut off and remove the limb in the same manner we must destroy this son he called all the people and he is presenting the argument who hiranyakashipu shesham sukham jeevadi yad vivarjanad it's very clear that in the presence of this kind of a belligerent unfriendly and inimical son there will be no welfare for me or or for my palace so the right course for me will be simply to behead him destroy him and eliminate him with no other thought or concern or kindness in the mind so hiratikashipu was very clear he tolerated the misbehavior of the son the incorrigible nature of the son twice already now he decided to destroy him so he called all the people all the lieutenants and gave them a very powerful strong order somehow you destroy this child any methodology you can adopt so you do whatever you like cut his head pierce him let friends be seated by his side on the same seat in a sofa let there be dagger in their hands let them thrust their dagger into his abdomen drop him from huge heights like mountains and hills throw him into the sea put him into the fire get the worst of cobras most powerful cobras make them bite him let them inject poison into his body beat him up if necessary mix poison in the food give him poisonous food by any means i want this boy to be completely done away with 
I don't want any excuse or any postponement. Try all you wish. See that the pranas are separated from the body. I don't want such a son at all. He is a cancer to my body, my palace, my family and my welfare. So all of them went away. And everyone tried his best. All the methods were tried. But they were of no avail at all. It is not that the order was not executed. The order was executed by everyone who was assigned the task. But earlier I told you, Govinda Parirambhida, right from the childhood, Prakhlada was being embraced by the invisible Lord inside his body, inwardly, in his heart. The same thing happened here also. And see what Bhagavata says. I am narrating this story for what purpose? Abhishta Doham Paribhavagram. The Supreme Lord Hari is a Paribhavagra. All kinds of torment, lack, everything that you have will be set right and redressed by Him. Another is He will fulfill your desires. I am illustrating by narrating this episode. Even when a father is torturing the son in such an unfatherly, unparently manner, what is the rescue or remedy for him? See what happened. Bhagavata is relentless in driving home the message of protection from the Supreme Lord in a relentless manner. Pare Brahmanya Nirdeshye Bhagavatya Khilatmani Yuktatmani Aphala Asan Apunyasyeva Satkriya Pare Brahmanya Nirdeshye Bhagavatya Khilatmani Prakhlada's mind was completely absorbed in resting upon the Supreme Lord Bhagavan who is Akhilatma. See how Bhagavata teaches the truth of the self. Whenever we refer to God, don't think that it is an external existence or an external entity or a body. We are referring to something present in our own body, permeating in the whole of the Panjabhudas. That is what we refer to as I, I. I. I is not a reference to a second product or an outside entity. By I we mean something indwelling in our body. That I refers to the self. And that self is the real Bhagavan that you are referring to and addressing. Pare Brahmanya Nirdeshye. Because his mind was completely absorbed in the Supreme Brahman, the reality which is normally indescribable. Yuktatmani. Because of this union, this merger, merger in a seven-year-old boy, what kind of a merger will it be? It was primarily a matter of faith. He believed, he trusted, he confided, he relied upon, he was resting upon the Supreme Lord who was no other than his own Antaratma. Because of that, Asan Yukta, yukta Atmanya Aphala Asan Abunyasyeva Satkriya An unholy man, a sinful man, even if he does a religiously noble act, that act will never fructify in the same manner. Whatever they wanted to do, they did all right, but none of them bore any fruit at all. My dear listeners, I am explaining and describing this episode only to insulate you against all possible fears in this world. Understand the earth is sustained by a great force. You are a denizen of this earth. If that force sustains the earth, sustains the sun, sustains the other planets and heavenly bodies and the whole universe, will it not sustain you, one small creature upon the surface of the earth? Never doubt. Doubt is the traitor. Doubt is the sinner. Cast aside all your doubt. Be firm. Be firm. The breath in our body is not maintained by us. The heat is not preserved by us. The heartbeat is not preserved by us. Everything is preserved by the supreme reality. Understand it. If you cannot understand it with your intelligence, at least accept it as a matter of faith. It is not that you don't understand and you have no faith. So the entire life is lost for you. The purpose of the narration is that 
परे ब्रह्मण्य निर्देश्य भगवत्य खिलात्मनि युक्तात्मन्य फला आसन अबुन्य सेव सत्क्रिया Think of Prahlada and all that transpired and imagine in your mind this little boy, seven years old. He had no rescue, no refuge, no anchor either in the palace or in the school, Padashala, where he was going. What can be done? Not only that people were unfriendly, they were destructive to him. They were trying to take away his life. Not one, many people are around. All of them were trying. And the wonderful Lord was wonderful enough to protect him. Bhagavata asserts, Sarekshita, Rekshati, Yohi, Garbhe. That power which protected you within the mother's womb, the same is the power that is going to protect you outside. Were you not protected when you were in the mother's womb? Yes. Having already protected you, he will continue to protect. Have this understanding or faith. When Hiranyakashipu found that all the efforts, all the attempts, all the means and procedures that he had unleashed failed to produce any effect, what will anybody think? Oh, I have done so much of harm to my son. How will he excuse me? He will not excuse me at all. He will not excuse me. I don't know what is going to happen, whatever it may be, because all other efforts have failed as a master, as a king, as an emperor. It is for me to try myself. Others have failed. When they have failed, I cannot be a spectator to it. Maybe their efforts were not sufficient. I cannot stop at it. Then the very order was wrong. The order giver was wrong. It is a disintegrity on my part not to take up the challenge myself. So I will take up the challenge myself and I will deal with him. A number of tortures I inflicted. The memory must be acting in him. Equally the memory is acting in me. So he called Prahlada. Can you imagine the scene and the encounter? The seven-year-old son. The seven-year-old son. When he was called, he simply goes there with all innocence and fondness and respect. He doesn't argue with his father. He only speaks, that's all. He goes there as a little child with a lot of respect and regard. His father has hatred and anger towards him, but he doesn't have. If at all he has, he has fondness, that's filial affection for the father and also respect and regard. But he does not accept the father's stand or the father's value or ideal. So there is an ideological conflict between the son and the father. If you were in my friend, I would have stopped for a few seconds to make you think about it. Just imagine a seven-year-old boy standing with folded hands and perhaps with a little bent head. And on the other side, the father, the, the, the tyranny, the tyranny of the father both of them are facing each other now. The father rolls up his moustache, takes the sword from his scabbard and raised his hand. And he says, villainous boy, what is it that you have been doing? You have been challenging me, challenging me, saying that you have a haji and I am nobody. I am a person, if you start looking at anybody, the whole place will shudder, shudder. The whole world trembles at my command. Such a person, you have the audacity and the haughtiness to challenge. You are a villain. I would like to know, what is the power standing upon which you are challenging me in this manner, disregarding me in this manner, devaluing me in this manner? What is that power that helps you to do this? I would like to hear. Then again, Srimad Bhagavata and Prahlada speak about it. Na kevalam me bhavadascha rajan Savahi belam belinam chabare sham Pare vare mi sthira jangamaye Brahmadayo yena vasham pranita You know, these are verses which you should learn, sing, listen to again and again. 
then you will find without any effort you will have the fulfillment of devotion spirituality religion and yoga na kevalam me bhavatascha rajan what was the enquiry of the father what is the source of strength for you by virtue of which you disregard and spurn me like this in your words he says that na kevalam me bhavatascha rajan savai belam belinam chaparesham i think vedavyasas vedavyasa should be greatly rewarded for using these words na kevalam me my dear father you are asking me what is the source of strength for you not only for me na kevalam me bhavatascha rajan the source of strength for you my dear father savai belam belinam chaparesham for all the people who feel that they are strong for all of them there is only one source of strength parevare mi sthira jangamaye brahmadayo yena vasham pranita the whole creation is divided as para and avara the high and the low the great and the small sthira jangamaye the sthavara and the jangama the mobile and the immobile creation brahmadayo everything has proceeded from brahma so brahma and the like all of them yena vasham pranita all these are under his control under his mastery under his dictate under his command there is only one source of strength not only for me but for you also my dear father the dikpalas indras chandra for all of them there is only one strength not only that brahmadayo yena vasham pranitaha you know the boy the child subtly reminds the father you are swearing upon all your strength is because of the boons that you have gained from brahma understand that brahma and the others shiva and the others all of them are under the strict control of lord hari that is the source of strength for me hiranyakashipu the emperor heard what the sun said and what is he saying hari my enemy number 1 he considers to be the sole source the sole strength even for brahma who has gifted my boons so according to him the boons that i have gained from brahma are under the control of mahavishnu what greater can be there what calamitous remark is this can i withstand it myself if i consider what the child says where do i stand is there any meaning in whatever i do or whatever i wish to achieve so he was saying how haughty arrogant conceited deluded you are you dare to tell me in this manner what is that lord hari who is that lord hari upon whom you stand so much with such a faith and you swear so much where is that lord hari this is how he put it yastvaya manda bhagyokto madanyo jagadishwara kwasau yadisa sarvatra kasmat stambhe na drishyate this is actually verse number 13 of the 8th chapter of the 7th skanda yastvaya manda bhagyokto madanyo jagadishwara what what did you say there is a supreme lord other than me in the universe for you and that is your lord hari manda bhagyokto your days in this world are numbered you are the most unfortunate accursed fellow yastvaya manda bhagyokto madanyo jagadishwara you recognize somebody to be different than me as a jagadishwara as a lord of the universe kwasau kwasau where is he show him to me he said yadi sa sarvatra he is everywhere my dear lord my dear lord is everywhere my father so the father is making an inquiry where is your lord hari upon whom you stand and challenge me so much my hari everywhere everywhere he is omnipresent he said